Each of you is St. Peter's, especially if you're a guest, we welcome you. We ask that you please uh, sign the card in the pew if you either put it in the offering plate or hand it to us on the way out. Greatly appreciate it. This uh, weekend, a lot going on. Many of you were at Butterfest uh, and got a little sun out there, a beautiful day for that. Uh, we also remember this weekend, we have Father's Day weekend, so blessings to all Father's Day uh, fathers out there. Lord be with you. We have little Ollie today is going to be uh, baptized and brought into the kingdom of God. And for that, we give thanks. And uh, for his many blessings, we give thanks and praise the Lord. Our service for uh, tonight is our blended service. So if uh, before we begin our service, would you do me a favor? Would you just rise and just turn around and say hello and God's peace with those around you. and service are projected on the screen for you uh, at the uh, at the after our opening hymn we'll go right into the word of holy baptism it'll be projected on the screen but you can also follow along in the hymnal on page 268 our opening hymn is holy is the lord 
May God bless our worship. Closer, by the way, please do. And I have an extra one here if somebody needs one. I also want to, I'd be remiss to say, uh, I almost forgot this young man back here is our guest speaker for this weekend is Pastor Stephen Thomas. He's preaching tomorrow, uh, tonight. Tomorrow he has the services. Yes, I have. Uh, and as we will be going on vacation. So really thankful. And you'll notice he's got a friend that he's uh, scooting around on there. So the Lord be with you. I'll be praying that things continue to go well for you, my friend. Thank you. Holy baptism is found on page 268. And as I said, you can follow along also. Come on closer. Here we go. Dearly beloved, Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go... And make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And the Apostle Peter has written, baptism now saves you. The Word of God also teaches that we are all conceived and born sinful, and are under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Ali received the sign of the cross both upon the forehead and upon the heart to mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. We pray. Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you condemned the unbelieving world through the flood. 
Yet according to your great mercy, you preserved, believing no one, his family, eight souls in all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his host in the Red Sea, yet led your people Israel through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing this washing of your holy baptism. Through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold Ali according to your boundless mercy and bless him with true faith by the Holy Spirit, that through this saving flood all sin in him, which he has inherited from Adam and which he himself has committed since, would be drowned and die. Grant that he be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church, being separated from the multitude of unbelievers and serving your name at all times with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope so that with all believers in your promise, you would be declared worthy of eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. To our sponsors, from ancient times, the church has observed the custom of appointing sponsors for baptismal candidates and catechumens. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church, sponsors are to confess the faith expressed in the Apostles' Creed and taught in a small catechism. They are, whenever possible, to witness the baptism of those they sponsor, they are to pray for them, support them in the ongoing instruction and nurture in the Christian faith, and encourage them toward the faithful reception of the Lord's Supper. They are at all times to be examples to them of the holy life of faith in Christ and love for their neighbor. Is it then your intention to serve as Ollie's sponsors in the Christian faith? If so, respond, yes, with the help of God. May God enable you to will and to do this faithful and loving work and with his grace fulfill what we're enabled to do. Amen. Hear the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. They brought young children to Jesus that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased. And he said to them, Let the little children come to me and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord preserve your coming in and your going out from this time forth, and even forevermore. Amen. Since Ali at this time cannot... Uh, speak for himself, the faith we as God's people will speak for him. Do you renounce the devil? Yes, I renounce him. Do you renounce all his works? Yes, I renounce them. Do you renounce all his ways? Yes, I renounce them. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Yes, I believe. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead? Yes, I believe. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? Yes, I believe. Would you do me a favor? Would you grab that picture over there for me? Thank you. And would you bring Holly over here? And would you give me his full name? Would you put his head over the baptismal font? Ollie? J. Schuenberg, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has now given you a new birth of water and the Spirit, 
May he keep you in his grace to life everlasting. Amen. This is for you. In holy baptism, God the Father has made you a member of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir with all of us of the treasures of heaven in the one holy Christian and apostolic church. We receive you in Jesus' name as our brother in Christ, that together we might hear his word, receive his gift, and proclaim his praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. We welcome you in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family and have granted Ali the new birth and holy baptism and made him a member of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly implore you that he's now become your child. You would keep him in his baptismal grace, that according to your good pleasure, he may faithfully grow to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of your holy name. And finally, with all your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol him, all you peoples. For great is his love toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. As you're able, we rise for confession of sin. Let us confess our sin to God, our merciful Father. Almighty God, we confess our thoughtlessness, our lovelessness, and our sinfulness. We have not lived at all times as your holy people. We have done the evil you forbid, and have not done the good you demand. We do repent and are truly sorry for our sins. Have mercy on us, kind Father, because of the obedience and sacrifice of Jesus Christ, your Son. Forgive us all our sins and renew us by the power of the Holy Spirit. This we confidently ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of the word, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Cast out all sins and evil desires from us, and pour into our hearts your Holy Spirit to guide us into all blessedness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we sing our hymn, How Great is Our God.
The Old Testament reading for today is from Isaiah 65. I was ready to be sought by those who did not ask for me. I was ready to be found by those who did not seek me. I said, here am I, here am I, to a nation that was not called by my name. I spread out my hands all the day to a rebellious people who walk in a way that is not good, following their own devices. A people who provoke me to face continually sacrificing in gardens and making offerings on bricks. Who sit in tombs and spend the night in secret places. Who eat pig's flesh and broth of tainted meat is in their vessels. Who say, keep to yourselves, do not come near me, for I am too holy for you. These are a smoke in my nostrils, a fire that burns all the day. Behold, it is written before me, I will not keep silent, but I will repay. I will indeed repay into their bosom. Both your iniquities and your father's iniquities together, says the Lord. Because they made offerings on the mountain and insulted me on the hills, I will measure into their bosom payment to their former deeds. Thus says the Lord, as the new wine is found in the cluster, and they say, do not destroy it, for there is a blessing in it, so will I do for my servant's sake, and not destroy them all. I will bring forth offspring from Jacob, and from Judah possessors of my mountains. My chosen shall possess it, and my servants shall dwell there. This is the word of the Lord. Tonight we review Luther's catechism, the first petition of the Lord's Prayer. Hallowed be thy name. What does this mean? God's name is certainly holy in itself, but we pray in this petition that it may be kept holy among us also. How is God's name kept holy? God's name is kept holy when the word of God is taught in its truth and purity, and we as children of God also lead holy lives according to it. Help us to do this, dear Father in heaven. Anyone who teaches or lives contrary to God's word pervades the name of God among us. From Psalm 103, verse 1. Praise the Lord, O my soul. All my inmost being praise his holy. From Jeremiah 23, verse 28. From Matthew 5, 16. And Jeremiah 23, 31. John 17, 17. Our epistle is from the third chapter of Galatians. Now before the faith came, we were held captive under the law, imprisoned until the coming faith would be revealed. So then the law was our guardian until Christ. Now before faith came, we were held captive under the law imprisoned until the coming faith would be revealed. So then was our law our guardian until Christ came in order that we may be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all sons of God through faith. For as many of you were baptized into Christ have been put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to his promise. I mean that the heir, as long as he is a child, is no different from a slave, though he is the owner of everything. But he is under the guardians and managers until the date set by his father. In the same way, we also, when we were children, were enslaved to the elementary principles of the world. But when the fullness of his time had come, God set forth his son, born of woman, born under the law to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be to God. As you're able, we rise to read the Holy Gospel lesson for today. 
Our Holy Gospel is according to Luke chapter 8, beginning with the 26th verse. Then they sailed to the country of the Gennesaret, Gerizines, which is opposite Galilee. When Jesus had stepped out on land, there met him a man from the city who had demons. For a long time he worn, had worn no clothes, and he had lived in a house but among the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him and said with a loud voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, do not torment me. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many a time it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles. But he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the desert. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? And he said, Legion. For many demons had entered him, and they begged him not to command them to depart into the abyss. Now a large herd of pigs was feeding there on a hillside, and they begged him to let them enter these, so he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the pigs, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. When the herdsmen saw what had happened, they fled and told it in the city and in the country. Then the people went out to see what had happened, and they came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed in his right mind, and they were afraid. And those who had seen it told them how the demon-possessed man had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerizines asked him to depart from them. So they, they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away saying, return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. And he went away proclaiming throughout the whole city how much Jesus had done for him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Congregation may be seen. I invite any children who would like to come forward for a message to do so at this time. Thanks for coming up, Abby. It's kind of lonely up here. We need, we need to be. Good to be here. Did you have a good day? Were you at the parade? Did you get warm? A little bit. Not too bad, though. It was a beautiful day. We've had some hot days, though. Now, let me ask you this. This is a silly question. Have you ever been in a water fight before? Do you have any squirt guns? OK. All right, so I have to make a confession. Uh, Pastor Crowley has been in a few water fights in his time and uh, had some squirt guns. So let me show you. Go on to the next slide. So have you ever seen anything like that? No. You, well, they're a little older. Now they're bigger. Yeah, I'm showing my age. But when I was a little guy, we used to have ones like that. You know, they do a pretty good job. You know, they, they don't hold a lot of water, but you've got a single stream, and, you know, you can squirt quite a bit, of, quite a ways, and I bet if you were over there, I could get you pretty good. We won't try that, but I bet I could. 
You know, let's pretend something. Let's pretend you're in your first water fight and get squirt guns, okay? We've got these, and we're in the same team. But we have some people on the other team that have these. How do you think we're going to do? Bad. Why? They can hold a lot more water, and they can shoot farther, and they've got a lot bigger strength. So if we were having a squirt gun fight, we'd be, well, we would be kind of going for cover. We try to do our best. But you know what? Let's just imagine something happens to change everything. And all of a sudden, Dad comes out, and Dad's got something to go on to this one. Look at that bugger. <laughs> now let me ask you, how do you think we're going to do now? I think we're going to win. I don't think they have a shot. In fact, if they were on the other team, I don't think it would be long and they would say, we give, we give up. Dad would change the day. And you know what, while we're saying that, we can give thanks for Dad, can't we? Because this weekend, tomorrow, what's tomorrow? Happy Father, it's Father's Day, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. We can remember our fathers and we can give thanks for all our fathers, right? Give thanks and praise to God for that. But let me tell you this. Water is one thing, but there's a big battle going on that's been going on for a while. You know what that battle is with? Who that is with? We've got somebody who isn't our friend that's out there. The devil. And he works on us, doesn't he? And I tell you what, if it was of ourselves, we would have lost. In fact, we'd be lost forever. But God didn't leave us that way, did he? The Heavenly Father sent someone special. Who is that one person who came? Jesus, yeah. He came down from heaven, and when he came down from heaven, he came to save. And the cool thing about it is he's got the power to save, doesn't he? Because he's not just a man, he's also God. And God has the power to do all things, including save us from our sin. And so Jesus does something amazing. He lives, and then he dies on the cross to pay for our sin, and he rises that we might have life now and forever. And you know what? There was a man, I don't have the picture of it, a man who was in a bad shape because he had devils, demons, that took control of him. But everything changed for him when Jesus came into the picture. Did you hear that in the reading? And they were afraid of him because they knew they were in the presence of God. Jesus changed everything for that man. He sent the demons away and freed the man that he could live for Jesus. And then he told Everyone. The man went out and told everybody about Jesus and what he had done, how much he had done for him. That's what God wants us to do, too. Now, we had something special happen today just a little bit ago. What was that? Do you remember? Yeah, little Ollie. Water was used, not in a super sober, but water was used in baptism to do something even better than what that can do. Ollie was made a child of God. And he was washed, clean, cleansed, rescued from sin, death, and the power of the devil. We're set free. Set free that we can live for him. And that's something we can give thanks for always. And that's something that gives us the assurance that we don't have to ever be afraid of anything. Because God is with us and he lives in us. And we have his love now and evermore. Would you do me a favor? Would you bow your head? Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for your great love. We thank you for coming down from heaven, not just for that man that one day who needed your help, but for all of us, that you through your life, death, and resurrection might have life now and eternally. And we thank you, just like for Ollie today in our baptism, you've made us your children and rescued us from sin and death and the power of the devil. Thank you, Jesus. May we know that and share that good news with everyone. In his name we pray, amen. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming. And have, uh, we sing our hymn.
let it be said of us.
Christian, our lives are for God show us. Are we zealous? The original statement of the divine what have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? <coughs> he sends Christ for us. Why did he cross the sea of Galilee to the area of the Gazarene? When Jesus comes into our lives, that's fundamentally changed. That's what we witness here tonight. A fundamental change without us. We see God as He truly is, one who shows steadfast love and grants us His salvation by sending His Son to pay the price for our redemption and be our Savior. So Christ's presence transforms possession by our demons into being clothed and in our right minds. The Gazarene demoniac is more like us than maybe we realize. The poor man was tormented by a legion of demons. That is three to six thousand demons. For a long time, he had worn no clothes. He had not lived in a house. And even shackles and chains could not hold him. He was experiencing a, a living death, as it were, a life among the tombs. He was worth absolutely nothing. Imagine the depth of this man's burdens and defenselessness and his vulnerability. So, what does it come down to? Well, we as sinners are troubled by demons. Our demons, too, can be a life of isolation from God and from other people. Behind them is always rebellion against God, and they can take forms of temper, temptations, abuses, and abuse. We also are utterly and completely helpless to change our situation. The fetters, well, that's the fetters of the law, the chains of the law, and they only enrage us. The law was not meant to be the means for human beings to save themselves, but the word of Christ is authoritative to change these tragic human realities. The merciful Christ changes all things for the better for this man. Guess what? Now he's clothed and in his right mind. The word spread fast. He is restored to his father's house. Christ also transforms our experience. Christ, through his perfect keeping of the law, 
and through his innocent suffering and death heals human beings from the effects of sin, death, and the devil. And yes, <coughs> and yes keeps us from the world. God's kingdom is in your midst. Your sins are forgiven. That's what Pastor said. Your sins are forgiven, and therefore you are restored to God. So how does this happen? Through the preaching of Christ's authoritative word, through the proclamation of that absolving word, forgiveness. And yes, through the word and the water in baptism itself. Clothed in baptism, God has forgiven our sins and made us family, his family. He has clothed us in the robe of Christ's righteousness. Through Christ's word, we learn the depth of his grace and mercy for us. This is the important and defining day in our lives. We are made children of God. <coughs> so, when somebody asks you, what's the defining, most defining day of your life? You could say, my baptism. I was made a child of God. So Christ even abides to transform rejection by the continuing proclamation of his gospel. The people are afraid of Jesus' work. The swine herders were terrorized over the behavior of their hogs. They valued their hogs. They were worth something. This demoniac? Nah. <coughs> the power of Jesus was graphically obvious. A herd of swine floating dead in the lake. A madman had been restored to sanity. So sadly, the people reject Jesus. They ask him to go away, and he accedes to their demands. Now they are in the same position as the formerly demon-possessed man. But Christ still does not relinquish them entirely to their demons. Well, what happens? The man wants to stay with Jesus and depart from that place that has been and will likely continue to be painful for him. Jesus forbids him and instead instructs him, return to your home and do what? Declare how much God has done for you. Now that man had a purpose. He was declare how much God has done for you. Not only purpose, direction, and passion for his life. That man knew who he wanted to serve. Not the devil anymore, but Jesus. <coughs> he valued his new life in Jesus. And this, Jesus makes provision for the ongoing proclamation of the gospel in places outside of Galilee, even after he has returned home to heaven. Christ continues to make provision for the proclamation of the gospel, not only to this area of Palestine, <coughs> but to all the world. And he sends out his disciples to do this to all nations and to baptize them, teaching them all that he had taught them. Christ continues to make that provision for the proclamation of the gospel to all nations despite continued rejection. <coughs> so as the world is preached, as the word is preached, and the sacraments are administered, Holy Communion, Baptism. Christ abides with us always to the end of the age. So, what happens in our world today? Well, we're so advanced that, well, it's easy to explain away happening like today's. <coughs> it would be just like we said in our baptism, Pharaoh's horses and, and chariots, they were all drowned in the Red Sea. 
little story, little Johnny's at school and his teacher is saying, you know, some of the things in the Bible aren't quite true. It says, it, cross, it says the children of Israel crossed the Red Sea and they were saved. <coughs> and the old Johnny says, well, how is that? Well, they actually crossed across the Reed Sea, and it's only six inches of water. And Lord Johnny says, wow, amen, hallelujah, praise the Lord. And the teacher says, what, what are you talking about? Well, didn't you read the rest of it? Pharaoh and his horsemen and his chariots were all drowned in six inches of water. What a miracle that is. They could have just stood up and walked out if that was the case. But that wasn't the case. Our God does things that are totally impossible. And so it is. <coughs> that then with the arrival of Christ, he did the impossible. He saved us from the devil, from our sin and eternal death, and he did it with his own son. Just by one death on the cross, he was able to do it. <coughs> so what happens in our baptism? We are given worth and value and, yes, indeed purpose for our lives. So with the arrival of Christ, he restored us to our Father. It is truly a new Father's Day for us that, yes, we'll remember our fathers here on earth, but also remember your Father in heaven. So again, we ask these questions of yourselves. How do you measure your worth? Who are you serving? What is your passion? What do you value? What are your defining moments? Have you made a difference? Yes, as Christ came to us through baptism, and as he continues to come to us through his word, he remains with us always, gives us our worth, purpose, transforming our isolation and desperation into joy of being our Father's children, serving Him with purpose to the very end of the age. Amen. <coughs> now may the peace and love of God that passes all our understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue by singing our offertory hymn, and the <coughs> offering is brought forward at this time.
God the Father Almighty, you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten Son to save us from our sin and to make us your children and heirs of all your blessings through faith in him. As you've overcome our sin, death, and the power of the devil, help us to live each day knowing the victory has been won by and through Christ our Lord. We pray for our families. On this Father's Day weekend, we pray for fathers that they faithfully lead their families and children in the way of Christ and peace. For mothers, that they may have strength and grace to manage their many responsibilities and to give them joy and fulfillment in their work and duties. And for children, that they may grow in the faith in which you have called them through baptism, heirs of your promises, and develop in all ways pleasing to you. Lift up all those who are weighed down by the guilt and shame of sin. Release them from their bondage and point them to the forgiveness at the cross and empty tomb of Jesus. Strengthen all those who are fighting against the power of Satan. Remind them of your presence in your word and sacraments. Give hope to all those who are isolated and lonely. Bring them into the presence of the loving community of your church, that they may find help and hope among your people. Enliven the faith you've given through your spirit as we are in the world, but not of the world. Empower us to be your witnesses in our relationships, our vocations, and among our neighbors, that all may know the power and victory of your son's death and resurrection, and rejoice in forgiveness, life, and salvation through him. Lord of compassion, forget not the sick, the suffering, and all in need. Grant them your peace, your strength, and healing according to your will. Especially remember the people of the Ukraine, Connie Zimmerman, Jake Strompy, Sebastian Valle, Charlotte Wilson, Gary and Sherry Rose, Sherry Neely, Sandy and Ken Rosensky, Phoenix Park, Jean Trexel, and all whom we name in our hearts. Give them confidence that you know their need and will well supply them with all that they need to endure to the day of your coming, when all affliction will end. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, we pray for your consolation for those who grieve the, from the death of loved ones, especially we remember the families of those who've lost loved ones in the recent shootings and disasters in our country, and for all who mourn, that they may know your comfort and peace as well as the assurance of the resurrection to eternal life for all who die in Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, creator and redeemer of all things, there isn't anything that our life in this world can throw at us that is bigger than you. Grant us your grace to trust you in all things, including in our serving and living and our giving for the sake of the gospel. Drive away fear and grant steadfast faith to trust you boldly in how we live and serve and give. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, we pray for the church that, like the man formerly possessed by demons, we may boldly proclaim how much Jesus has done for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For thankfulness for all your blessings, especially for the cross and empty tomb of Jesus, we praise you. We further give thanks for Ollie's baptism, as well as the 41st wedding anniversary of Bob and Kathy Corey and the 60th wedding anniversary of Dennis and Betty Andreessen. We give you thanks. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as we sing 10,000 Reasons.
of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. Amen. Our closing hymn is Blessed Be Your Name.
Once again, good afternoon. The Lord's richest blessings to each of you. Thank you, Pastor Thomas, and the Lord's blessing with you in healing as well. Thank you for helping out this weekend. We pray the Lord's blessings, give thanks to all. He was made a child of God through holy baptism. The Lord be with you and your family. Uh, we also uh, want to say a blessed Father's Day weekend to all fathers. The Lord be with you. Lord's richest blessings. Um, next week, uh, remember that the, the service on Sunday is outdoors, and it's at 10 o'clock, and it's over at the park. Uh, and so weather, uh, weather permitting, if, uh, if that doesn't work out, we'll be back here.